Okay, so with all the negative American news going on right now, I figured that everybody would probably like a little bit of peace of mind, right? I mean, it, it's a sad situation, and with that being said, I just kind of want to make something a little bit more positive and celebrate a pretty important thing happening today because, well, it, it's getting news coverage, but I don't think that, well, especially considering everything going on right now, it's getting enough news coverage because this is going to be, I mean, we're, we're in a, a spot of American history at this point, right? COVID-19, the riots... But NASA and SpaceX are going to be launching Americans into space for the first time in almost 10 years. So it's been almost a decade. Yeah, I'm pretty sure like 2011, I think, was the last time that they did it. At least that's kind of what's being hoped, right? We're hoping that the launch happens today as long as it's safe. I mean, this is actually the second attempt that they were going to do because back on Wednesday, that, that was actually like the initial launch date. They didn't have a weather cooperation. Obviously, everything has to go right to put people in space, to launch a rocket up into the sky, and then put people out of Earth. Everything pretty much has to go right there. And if the weather doesn't cooperate and it becomes dangerous to try and fly a rocket all the way through, you know, Earth and out into space. Obviously, you can't do that. Now, there's about a 50% chance, apparently, that the weather will be good today for them to do the launch. This is pretty much the next window of opportunity that they had to launch the rocket. And this is a very historic moment. So, pretty much throughout the entire history of human space and aviation and shit like that, right, NASA has pretty much been the one launching Americans. Like, that's obviously the space agency that we use and we fund and everything. But in recent memory, uh, we haven't been launching astronauts into space. Whenever Americans go up to the International Space Station, it's not NASA sending them up. So, first off, this is the first time that we've done this in a long time. So it's historic, and it's historic for many reasons that I'll get into, but a big precedent being set today is the fact that SpaceX is involved. Now, if you don't know what SpaceX is, essentially it's Elon Musk's space company, right? They have a huge influence, essentially, in the space community now. Ever The last few years especially, it's like kind of built up and everything. But they've got all these contracts from NASA to do all kinds of stuff, man. It's been pretty cool. So this is going to be probably the first time, if everything goes well today, and they actually do get to launch... This will be the first time that, like, a commercial company has put people into a position like this. Obviously, NASA is government-funded, right? It's not a commercial thing. It's not like some CEO runs it or anything. It's a government-funded project and agency. So the fact that an actual company is essentially going to be the one helping put this whole thing together is monumental in and of itself because this is a pretty big step toward commercial spacecrafts and space flight and things like that. This will be the first step into kind of normalizing that whole situation. Eventually, there's a future out there in which people envision that, you know, you'll be able to just go up into space for like 40 bucks, right? Be able to get on a rocket, fly out to space or whatever, go up into a space station or go to a different planet. God knows how long that'll take, but that's that's kind of what people are thinking and of course there's a lot of money actually to be made in space i think most people don't realize that the the concept of a space economy is completely overlooked as of now because it's not normalized in like media and pop culture and things like that when we actually successfully learn how to mine asteroids and things like that and then successfully bring it back to earth not only does that open us up to the opportunity to get all these different minerals and stuff back to earth to do things with but also that opens up so much commerce and money opportunity so this is pretty important that this is a step being taken but more importantly the step being taken here this is kind of a first step to first off people going back to the moon which is actually a project that nasa is working on called project artemis or the artemis program that's that's probably the actual formal name for it and everything but it's essentially an ongoing program that nasa and its space partners are working on to actually get people back onto the moon specifically the first woman and the next man they want to land at the lunar south pole region by the year 2024 so they got pretty much four years to do it and this is kind of one of the first steps now obviously you can't just be like like, oh, we want to put people on the moon and then just go do it. Like, you, you got to have tests. You got to make sure that you're taking baby steps. Space is a pretty big and scary damn thing. I mean, the risk is very huge, but the reward is also very huge. I mean, this isn't us just going back to the moon, walking around for three hours, you know, kicking a soccer ball or whatever they, they would do up there and then planting an American flag flying back home and never going for another hundred years or whatever. This is basically the first step into actually building a lunar base on the moon in which humans have a consistent presence at. The idea of building a base on the moon has been something conceptualized in science fiction for decades at this point, but also now it's becoming pretty realistic. I mean, this is an actual opportunity that we're going to have. Now, I would imagine that it's going to be like the International Space Station and astronauts would do trial 
wild times and things up there. You know, they're not going to be up there, I would assume, on the moon for five years or whatever. They would probably have astronauts kind of rotate in in, like, monthly shifts or whatever. You know, you go up there, you do your job on the moon for a month or two, you come back home for a little while, and that's how that whole thing would work. Obviously, people don't actually, like, live, live on the space station for a ridiculous amount of time. I actually think that the longest stay ever done in space history was done by a Russian cosmonaut, and it was only, like, a, a year and a few months. It wasn't that long at all. Maybe, like, 15, 13, 14 months, something like that. So these people are probably, I would assume at least, not going to just be hanging out on the moon for, like, seven years just doing their own thing. But this isn't the only step in the entire thing either. That That's what's crazy, okay? People have been talking about, oh, we need to go to Mars, things like that. It, it's been, obviously, a science fan's dream for God knows how long at this point to have people on Mars. Well, that's, once again, a legitimate possibility because the Artemis program is paving the way for people to eventually go to Mars, and that's what launches like this will help actually, you know, start setting the entire process up for. So, so some of the technical details of all this, I think, are pretty important to talk about because, of course, this is the stuff that's quite literally going to hopefully put astronauts into space. So SpaceX has this big rocket called the Falcon 9. They've pretty much, well, you can never really say perfected, especially in the terms of, like, spacecraft and things like that. But they've tested this thing a ridiculous amount of times. It's pretty successful. It's pretty dependable. And it's probably the best rocket currently in the American arsenal to put people into space. As of me making this video, the astronauts are already aboard the rocket. They're in something called the Crew Dragon, which is the capsule that they'll end up flying into space on. This entire thing is called the Demo 2 Test Flight. And they're actually going to go to the International Space Station. And they're going to try and dock them and put the astronauts in. It's very complex. A lot of scientists and engineers have worked on this project the entire time and it's very important for not only the American economy going forward but also honestly for American morale. A big part of the space race was the fact that Americans basically didn't want to get bitched by the Soviet Union and, and made to look inferior. That kind of is what really started the whole space race. I mean in reality when it all started out the Soviets were already putting shit up into space and doing all kinds of stuff they were making the Americans look goofy. The Americans said, oh shit, you know, the Soviets are kind of like making us look stupid. Let's actually go to space and do this now. And of course, Americans were the first to land on the moon. That kind of, you know, ended the space race. We won. Hoorah. Yeah, good job, America and whatnot. But America's kind of been getting punked again by the Russians for about a decade now. They've been the only people who've been able to fly people to and from space on their Soyuz rockets. The CSA, the Australian Space Agency, Europe Space Agency, no one else has been putting people up into space from their own ground. They've been doing it through the, through the Russians. So America actually taking this step, I think, is huge for American morale. And I think it's coming at a time, hopefully, in which we'll actually need it. Because having Americans actually invested into science and space and shit like that is crucial, in my opinion. I mean, the first country to really, I guess form a lunar economy and actually start taking this shit real serious is the country that's going to benefit for hundreds if not thousands of years. Having a head start on something so huge like space is monumental and it's a good thing that NASA is actually kind of getting their head back into the game and now that companies like SpaceX have popped up and kind of I guess reinvigorated public interest into the entire thing back into science and back into space I think that's also great because obviously SpaceX is going to be a very fundamental and key piece to NASA NASA missions going forward. They're they're already big into into the whole Artemis program and everything. Obviously, today is going to be a huge day for SpaceX. Today is going to have a lot of long-lasting effects on space, essentially, for Americans. And it's something that I think needs to be talked about more because, you know, people will talk about all kinds of dumb shit and, you know, that's fine. Of course, you got to turn your brain off a little bit sometimes, but when it comes down to it, we're basically looking at thousands, millions of years of human evolution right here. I mean, fuck. Cavemen back in the day used to bang rocks together and, and fucking didn't even know what fire was. They were living a real life episode of the Flintstones, right? Just yabba dabba doing around out there, doing whatever they were doing, killing woolly mammoths to survive and stay warm and shit. And then now you have people literally taking a big piece of metal and putting a bunch of like, you know, really explosive stuff at the bottom of it to kind of launch it. And they're literally putting people out in space. And then they got this other big piece of metal that kind of just like floats around the earth in this orbital thing. It just kind of hangs out there. And what they're going to do, they're going to do a bunch of math and science shit, to, to put it as simply as possible, to try and make that rocket connect with it. And then they're going to put the people in it, and it's going to be pretty cool. 
But yes, if you can't tell, uh, I'm, I'm very excited for today. I think it's going to be awesome. I'm hoping that the launch actually does happen today and that everything goes well. Because uh, this is going to be a very positive moment for the world in reality. I mean, something I think uh, is important. Well, I, I don't know if it's important. I, I think it's notable. It's noteworthy. Is that uh, Elon Musk made a, a pretty... Uh, bold statement. If you don't know, Elon Musk is like, I, I don't I, I don't know who to even consider him, right? I mean, he, he basically runs everything. He's got Tesla making electric cars. He runs all these solar powered companies and stuff. But at the same time, he runs SpaceX. This is his company, right? So the other day when the launch didn't go, it didn't go because obviously the weather didn't cooperate. He told the sons of the astronauts going into space, basically, if everything goes well and the rocket gets them up there and everything goes good, it's all on the engineers. They did a great job. It's been fantastic how the crews worked together at SpaceX to make this whole thing happen. However, if everything doesn't go as planned and, you know, shit unfolds very tragically, then the blame and the fault is all put on me. That's very brave to say because, I, I mean, taking the risk that they are right now is mo it's monumental first and foremost but it's also got to be very trying on the mind i can't imagine what kind of pressure all of the people working on this project are, are under essentially right now to make sure that everything goes right and it doesn't always go right that that's unfortunately true we've seen the challenger and the columbia and whatnot we've seen this happen before but i think today is going to be a good day for uh for the whole thing and i hope that the launch happens today and i think everything's going to go well all of the procedures went perfect on wednesday they went as smoothly realistically as you can get them to go with all of the factors the unfortunate part was the weather didn't cooperate now if the weather doesn't cooperate today which is a possibility it's like a 50 50 shot it's very possible it doesn't hopefully it does the next window opportunity for launch is actually just tomorrow at 3 p.m. So we won't have to wait too long if it doesn't work out today, but hopefully it does because I want to see a rocket go into space today. This is some cool shit and I want to see it happen now. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel, follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at sub to optimist. Make sure to check out shop Opti down below. Thank you to my channel members. Your support helps my channel tremendously. Obviously this isn't a video that I would typically do, but I'm very interested in it. And uh, if you're not very cool, but uh, anyway, with that being said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hop off here. So thank you for watching. And until my next video, this is Optimus getting on a rocket to space and signing out.